Joining us now is Krista Von Hillebrand, the Deputy Director of the International Tsunami Information Center. Thank you for being with us this morning. Hi, yeah, it's a pleasure. So, you know, I think once we saw the tsunami warning come out, at first it was, you know, just kind of an advisory and then right. it became a warning. People got really anxious here in Southern California. Can you talk about what the system is and how it's laid out for here on the West Coast? Yeah, so first thing that we do is we calculate the magnitude of the earthquake. And so based on the magnitude of the earthquake and its location, then we have an idea of how serious the, the impact might be. So we'll put out, we'll put out a message, you know, for a certain area. And then once we get the first reading from the DART, um, these are stations that we have, subsea stations, um, then we're able to actually do a tsunami, uh, actually able to model what we think will, will, will happen with the, with the tsunami and forecast the wave heights. And so then once we have that, then we're able to make these, you know, we're, for places of large way, we, depending on what we forecast in wave heights, if, you know, we're expecting, you know, more than three feet, then we'll put them into a warning because that means that there could actually be flooding but in other areas where we where what the forecast shows between one and three feet, then you know then we just expect in currents and we would put them under an advisory. But then as more data comes in, then we will 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 be changing. We could either upgrade or downgrade the alert based on the observations and further modeling and knowledge about um, the earthquake itself. Right, and of course that's what we saw here as that warning got canceled for our area. Of course, for people not along the coast or visiting an area they weren't familiar with, they were very scared mm -hmm. about this warning. How does this compare to ones in the past? Was it alarming to you? Well, I'm located in Puerto Rico, so obviously I'm outside <laughs> yes. the danger zone. So I'm at the ITIC office and I manage the tsunami warning system for the Caribbean. Um, so I was, I, I've been supporting the, the effort. But yes, to be in Hawaii, you know, and to see mm -hmm. a tsunami warning, what some people might not realize is, yes, the tsunami warning was issued for the whole island, but if you go in the islands, but once you go into the product, then you could also, then we could also see that the forecast would vary across the islands, but the, but the, you know, the, the but the, the operating procedures, the issue, it, you know, islands wide. So, yes, I think if you've never experienced a tsunami and all of a sudden you see a tsunami warning and you understand that that could be meat and flooding, that could be an initial scare. But the authorities know what to do and they just take precautions. You know, you just mm -hmm. better be safe than sorry. You know, I, I do think some people automatically think of a giant wave coming at them when you hear tsunami. When we're here in Southern California, can you talk about there? There are differences into how tsunamis end up impacting coastlines. That is that is correct. You know, you have like what we had in, in Japan in 2000, 2011, right, where it's like walls of water, you know, 40 meters high coming in, you know, and that's obviously a lot of flooding. But those are really, really big extreme cases. In this case, at the beginning, for those areas closest to the epicenter, you now they were thinking maybe 10 meters, which is still a lot of water. But, you know, most of the time what happens, you know, especially when you're far away from the tsunami, you don't have any strange offshore bathymetry like the case of Crescent City, then what, what you really have is just really strong currents. And that's when we issue this advisory level. That was something that the National Weather Service introduced like over 20 years ago to distinguish between these waves, big waves causing inundation um, for which we issue a warning versus then these other lower level threat um, threat messages, which are an advisory. And it's basically a call to Marina. We've seen a lot of millions of dollars of damage, you know, in Santa Cruz and Crazy City, different places along California. But, you know, it's it's just from those really strong currents that sometimes accompany these earthquakes yes. and tsunamis. And I will not be swimming or surfing today. <laughs> yeah, no, no let's leave that alone. That's a very bad idea. Exactly. And one very important thing is to note that, you know, just because up the coast or in Seattle there was no impact, that doesn't mean that in California there could not be an impact because the tsunami is guided by the bathymetry of the ocean. So, for example, you know, Crescent City always gets very large waves. It's just because of that offshore bathymetry. Maybe San Jose, other San Luis, you know, they have these things. So you have to be really, really careful and not say, oh, because in Alaska nothing happened, which is closer to the epicenter than I am in California, we're safe. No, that is that is a big mistake. You really, you know, the Weather Service says that there's a you know possibility of dangerous currents. There is that possibility. We're seeing data that indicates that's a possibility. If we're saying there's a warning, it's that we got the data, we got the modeling, it's showing there could be inundation. So don't go with what's happening on your neighbor. Go with what the message says for the area where you live, you work, or you spend your time. I think that's an important message. Krista, thank you so much for being with us this morning. You're welcome. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. Thanks. We want